So I'll talk something about the exercise best practices, which is a very, very important interview question. Okay? Any interview you go, so usually they ask like, I have a package which is running for three hours, right? So how can you optimize it to make it to 30 minutes or one hour? So what are the steps you follow? Can you tell me about that? Yeah. So this is very simple question from the interviewer, but you have to talk a lot. You have to talk a lot around some 10, 15 minutes on that. Yeah. So there are different things about the SSIS best practices, right? In the SSIS best practices, actually you can do so many things. So let us take an example of uh, event handlers. Let, let me open some package. Yeah. Here, here, there are some steps to be followed. Okay. So Microsoft has written a white paper. Okay. Microsoft has written a white paper on SSIS best practices. I think you can get it from Google. So let me uh, show you if, we, if you can get it from Google. Uh, just type uh, Microsoft uh, SSIS best practices white paper right yeah see this, there is a PDF right in if you go to the Google there is a PDF for SSIS best practices so I suggest everyone to download this particular thing and at least go through once this is a very beautiful white paper written by uh, Microsoft okay uh, but this may be in 2008 but nothing has changed from 2012 on 2014, especially on the performance tuning. Okay, so whatever you did in 2005, 2008, it's almost the same concepts. Please download this white paper and go through uh, the different things, and you can learn the beautiful things about SSIS. And there are some beautiful things about uh, uh, SSIS according uh, in 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 the area of performance. Okay, so my, in this uh, white paper, they will be talking about uh, uh, a test where they have run in Informatica, Data Stage, and SSIS, and uh, it shows a proof that SSIS is, uh, in performance-wise, it is better than Informatica and uh, Data Stage in a particular scenario. So, and in a particular hardware environment, in a particular uh, SAN storage area network. So they have some configuration set. In those configurations, in the production system, Microsoft is actually performing better than uh, the other ETL tools, right? But it may not be true in all the environments, right? But Microsoft has given that. So this very beautiful white paper. So just download this, and uh, everything is uh, shown step by step, and all those things. So there are hundred, maybe hundred topics here, right? There are some case studies and all those things, right? There may be hundred topics. But uh, just try to remember at least 10 to 15. Yeah. So this is uh, some. They, they say that there is a ETL world record, right? So what they say is uh, some. Uh, there is a one terabyte of data, right? So which they have run in uh, HP uh, Unisys system on 64 bit uh, within 30 minutes. Within 30 minutes, Microsoft says that they have loaded within 30 minutes one terabyte of data to the target system, which they say it as a world record, okay? Just try to go through this, uh, but uh, this may not be true in all environments, especially they have some set up an environment of this kind, right? So this is the environment they're talking about. So in this particular environment, they have tested this and it says it ETL world record, yeah? So very beautiful paper by Microsoft and it says that what are things you can do, you should not do and all those things. Okay, so that, that some of the things which I am going to explain in today's class. Okay, I, I hope you uh, know how to search this, right? SSIS best practices white paper, and you have a PDF here. Yeah, just download this. Uh, in this class, actually, I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, I'm going to maybe I'm I'm going to show you something of that white paper, right? So because the, that white paper is a superset. Okay, so. Okay, so one, one of the things, right, one of the things when you do the SSIS package, packages, so let me, what I'll do is I'll instead of opening this package, I'll open some other, uh, little bit a bigger package, just to make sure that, uh, yeah, I'll open this, no, okay,
Okay, so just to make sure that uh, all the different tasks are covered here, so I'm just trying to open a, a more uh, comprehensive package. Yeah, so let, let, let us take this example, right? So the, one of the things what Microsoft says is, uh, uh, first of all, try to avoid asynchronous transformations wherever possible. Okay, so in the previous class we were studying about uh, synchronous transformations and asynchronous transformations, right? So what is asynchronous transformation? So asynchronous transformation is a transformation where it will be waiting for all the input to come from the source. Example, in a particular data flow task, right? If you use a example, you have a data flow task, right? And I have some uh, transformations, right? If I use some transformation called aggregate transformation. Right, so where it groups the things, so it can it can it can aggregate only when all the data is there. It cannot aggregate when the some of the data is there, right? So that is called as asynchronous. And what is a synchronous transformation? As and when it gets the data, it will just try to push in the pipeline. Example, uh, delayed column is a synchronous transformation. So basically, it will get the full name. Example, delay whatever the column you are deriving in the delayed column, as and when it gets to the inputs, it need not wait for other rows to come, right? It can just pass the pipeline to the destination. So those kind of things are called synchronous transformation. Yeah, just try to avoid those asynchronous. And uh, one other thing is while pulling the huge volumes of data. Okay, so usually what happens is if so, if you know the concept of uh, databases say it as uh, SQL Server or DB2 or uh, say it as Oracle, right, or Sybase or MySQL. What happens is on every table you will be having an index, right. So what is an index? Index is something which is used to sort your data in a physical order or to seek your data in some strategy so that it can be fetched very fast. Right, this is called as a table index. I hope you know about the table and index, right? So, when the index is created, there will be some index pages, right? So, when there is data in the table, so there will be some information in the index page also. So, one thing is, when example, if you are loading into a from a large file, example, you have a large file about some tra sales transactions, okay? Sales transactions over all, all over the world. You have a file called uh, sales transactions and with some company and it has some hundred million records. Okay? So hundred million records are usually considered as a very large file in the ETL world, right? So when you are pull, when that is a source, if you are putting into the target, into a table called sales transactions table in SQL Server, say, right? If that sales transactions table has an index on top of it, okay? if it has index on top of it, then it will take more time than, than in a scenario where it doesn't have index. Because whenever it tries to push the data into the table with index, it has to store the data into the table and also update the index page with the relevant information about the table. It has to do two things so that if you have 100 million records, then it will do it for every record, which is a very problematic scenario. So one blind thing, if you are working on ETL, if you are dealing with huge volumes, first of all, try to drop all your indexes on the final table, load the data, and create the indexes on that table again. So this will save a lot of time. Okay, I hope you understand. Uh, so I'm saying some things in keeping in mind that uh, you are not too beginner level and uh, you already have some knowledge on uh, databases, okay? But uh, if there are any few people who does not have idea about anything, then just try to put as a question. So when we have some time, I'll let you know, right? The other important thing is to improve the performance of exercise package too, is to avoid the select star. Usually what we do is uh, in the source, we directly select the table. Right, if you go to the SSIS uh, table, right, so if it, if there is a source, just you select the table, right, so example, I open a package, in the, I have a OLEDB source, right, usually what happens is, I will directly select a table or view and I am just selecting the whole table, right, 
but say in a scenario you were table has 150 columns but actually you need only 30 columns out of it there is no need to select all the things that right this is something like a select star right or you can write a write a SQL sum command using a select star right select star so you have to avoid these kind of things whatever the columns you need from the source table please choose only those columns okay if your source table is very small say it has 10 columns or 12 columns that's okay you can do a select star that's fine but if your source thing has 30 columns 40 50 so I suggest you to use the columns whatever is needed okay so this will improve the performance because of the buffer size okay okay so there are some settings in the OLEDB destination okay so where is my OLEDB so I'll go to my previous package I have a thing called OLEDB destination so what is my OLEDB destination here just double click right so there are some things here which we haven't learned in the, any of the previous class right so we haven't learned about these things very important concepts here right so so there is a property called keep identity so what is the meaning of this your source there is a concept of identity column right so what is an identity column there is a seed value and increment value for identity column seed value may be the initial value given and increment is the incremental as and when the data gets loaded into the target table the identity column will auto generate the number right so usually identity column may not be mapped in the mappings right in the mapping section it need not be mapped right because it will be auto generated number but there are some few scenarios where you have to keep your source identity values as it is you should not generate a new one right at that time you have to make sure that you check this keep identity okay and there is another thing called table lock okay so what is this table lock table lock means if you are loading the data into this table so what you are saying to SQL server is please log this table please log this table don't give the permissions for anyone any of the users to use this table to update it or delete it or insert it so it will totally lock it right so that this is the option if you want that scenario you usually do table locks by default it is checked which is good okay <laughs> there is some some other section called as uh, keep nulls okay so this is uh, something when you are talking about a constraint okay there are some uh, check constraints uh, or some default constraints right in the def there are some con concept of constraint right like it's a check constraint or there are the five types of constraints in SQL server if you're talking about the constraints and if any of the columns in the destination is having a constraint okay and but as from the source it is violating the constraint right so at that time like you can keep them as nulls okay <coughs> and the other, other thing is called check constraints so what this will do is example there will be some columns called uh, amount right but you may be having constraint on your table saying that this amount cannot be less than zero so what usually SQL server exercise does is every time it loads the data it will check the constraint okay is it passing the constraint yes is it less than zero yes it is less than zero yes every time you should check right every time it checks every time it checks it will take some time right so if you don't want to check the constraints actually you can uncheck this particular box right you can uncheck this so that your performance will be increased okay so this is something about these options okay so what I'll do is I'll clear the drawings and uh, so this is something about the upper section so based on the scenario you may have to modify these things okay and very important come to the bottom section in the bottom section you have two things called rows per batch and maximum insert commit size okay so what what happens is example your 
SSIS is reading the data from a source, okay? It will not commit the data into the destination table until these many rows are read or loaded. These many rows are loaded. This will not commit. How many rows is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 2 billion, right? So this is nothing but, uh, I think this will e e is equal to 2 power 32, okay? This, um, this value is equal to either 2 power 6 or 2 power 32. 2 power, I, think, I guess 2 power 32. The value of 2 power 32 is equal to 2 billion, which is the same value as this one. It means that your commit size on the destination table is 2 billion record. It means that after reading 2 billion records, which is very huge data, right? 2 billion is too huge, right? Commit the data. It means that don't commit until all the 2 billion records are loaded. But usually in the real time scenarios, your data may not be this much, right? Your data may be considered very huge already if you have 50 million rows or 100 million. That's considered as very huge in real time. In my real time experience so far from last 10 years, uh, the highest number of records I loaded uh, in using SSIS is 400 million records. So we have we had one of the sources where it will store the catastrophe information uh, for some insurance companies. For every latitude and longitude in the world, every latitude in the longitude in the world, if you give a property insurance to some customer, how much you can quote, what is the premium amount you can quote at this particular latitude and longitude for this property. So this kind of information uh, there are a lot of companies who is doing research on this, this kind of information and there are only three to four companies in the world, uh, something like RMS, AAR and these companies and this whole data set is only 400 million records. So this is the highest thing which I have loaded using the SSIS and to process that and to value, we, we had some business logic in between although not only just di directly loading it. But if with those 400 million records using normal environment, it is it will take four to five hours to load, right? It's huge because like the, your data, your table will be around uh, 250 GB to 300 GB for 400 million records, very huge. So maybe you can remember for the interview, if you have 400 million records, your table size will be around 250 to 300 GB, right? I'm talking about some uh, columns where I have 100 plus columns, not five columns. Right, 100 plus columns and you have 400 million records, it's around 250 to 300 GB, very huge. But usually in the uh, real time it's not like that, right? So, in the, so what you can do is, you can make it as a uh, particular value, you can, what you can do is like, okay, after every 10,000 rows, just commit it, so that it is increase the performance, right? Usually I change this particular thing to increase the performance, I make it 10,000 or I make it some uh, 100,000 based on uh, my scenario. If my source has 1 million records, I'll make it as 100,000 so it is in 10 batches, right? Uh, if my source is only 100,000, I'll make it as 10,000 each in batch. So usually like just try to make it to 10 batches and divide it by 10 will give this value, right? This is actually insert commit size and there is a rows per batch. Rows per batch is something like in one batch, how many rows you want to read it to perform some condition or operation. By default, this is null. By default this is empty, right? By default this is empty. Just try to, uh, then just don't give too much low value. Example, if your source has 100,000 records, just give it 10,000 here. If your source has uh, 10,000 records, just give it 1,000, right? Make sure that your uh, number of chunks are not too too many, right? Make sure it is maybe 8 to 10 chunks of data. So based on that, you give this size and your performance will be improved. Okay, so the same kind of information actually is available in the white paper of SSIS also. You can go through that. Yeah, so these are the things which I just talked about in the OLEDB destinations. And I just talked about keep identity, and uh, I talked about keep nulls, uh, table lock, check constraints, and I talked about uh, rows per batch. Right? I talked about maximum insert commit size. Yeah, so you can just go through that. Uh, so this is something about the same that the slides will all already tells you something about that yeah okay
just any question just uh, try to put it in the chat window okay so we'll try to take it off yeah right so I'm just coming back to the package okay coming back to the package and there are some few other section called sections in the properties so far we have learned so many properties but we will show you some more properties I will right click on the control flow go to the properties and pin this right just show more this just go right usually there is a there are there will be some sections for control flow and data flow okay so if I go to the data flow if I click on the data flow I, if I if you see my mouse I if I just clicked on the control flow right it is an execute SQL setup package yep but if I click on the data flow now it is in the data flow employee new heads this is data flow does automatically the properties will be changed okay so the main optimization you can do in ETL is especially on the data flow task rather than the control flow control flow is all about having a workflow right this is just doing the workflow just do this go there on this condition do this just go there go there go there go there just complete right this is how the control flow works but data flow is not like that data flow is the core ETL operation works in data flow so that's why if I click on data flow task the properties are different than the control these are the control flow properties but you click on the data flow the properties are different okay so there are some properties which are related to performance management okay so those are available in the miscellaneous section okay those are available in the miscellaneous section okay so first thing we will learn about default buffer max rows okay so let me take a pen yeah so we will learn about these two things first default buffer max rows and default buffer size okay so what is this buffer okay so whenever the SSIS data flow task is reading some information from a source before it loads to the destination maybe it has to perform some transformations right so to do that it has to keep the data in a temporary location which is called as tempdb in SQL server there is a database called tempdb which SSIS will use to keep its buffer okay so this buffer is talking about the buffer in the tempdb here it is talking about default buffer max rows default buffer size okay so this default buffer size is nothing but it is in the KB this is in KB not MB so basically this is 10 MB so whatever you have I, I, this is showing as in the not KB it is in bytes this is the number of bytes let me clear this stuff uh, okay this 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 information right it is showing in the bytes so this information is 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 nothing but 10 MB okay this information is nothing but 10 MB okay so it is showing in the bytes if you want to increase the buffer size to uh, maybe 100 MB you can change it here if you have huge number of records just change it to uh, more memory but make sure that your RAM also supports that if your RAM is only 4 GB and you are saying that okay take 1 GB for this one and other things running on your server may be going down okay don't allocate too much buffer for SSIS also you have to make sure that what are the other resources also consuming your data uh, consuming your processes right and there is another section called default max buffer rows right so by default based on your size for 10 MB Microsoft says that keep it 10,000 rows and if you put 100 MB then make it to 100,000 so this is the standard so just remember this point so this way you can actually based on your uh, input you can actually go up and down in the memories right this is something about the default max rows and default buffer size okay okay there is a concept called threading okay I mean uh, this threading 
is like what it does internally so we don't know what is happening in it to be frank we just give the setting and do trial and error there is no way you can monitor this like okay so uh, what is the standard for this one what is the standard for threading there is nothing like by default it is 10 but based on your server configuration actually you can increase and decrease your threadings okay if any of your SSIS packages are working poor just try to increase the number of threads it may be giving some performance optimization but too many number of threads also will give will give the problem so just do trial and error with these threads so that it will be doing some multitasking inside okay right okay so there is another section called uh, blob temp storage path and buffer temp storage path this is uh, when you are dealing with a binary large objects okay what is blob blob is something like a it's a data type he used it for one of the columns in a SQL server table it is available in Oracle on DB2 also so basically if you want to upload some pictures or if you want to upload some videos into a SQL server table column you have to use a concept called blob right so if you are dealing with the blob data then make sure that you play with these settings so that you get some optimal performance okay so this is something on uh, the different data flow toss what you can uh, what you can find it out right so what you what I'll do is I'll, I'll just go to some other section right so this is the default buffer size and max rows what I was talking about so this just you can go through this right and uh, I talked about default max size Okay, so I, in the just previously I was talking about a property called delay validation, right? So for if you are getting warnings and if you want to compress the warnings, uh, I was talking about a delay validation property for data flow task and connection values and everything, right? So actually this will also improve the performance. If you if it tries to validate the package every time, right? So it will actually come down its performance. So if you put the delay validation, it will improve the performance. Yep. Okay, so this is something on the data flow task we talked about, right? And in the starting classes, someone asked me how we can do the parallel processing in SSIS, okay? The parallel processing in SSIS can be done using some properties, right? I'm in the control flow, I'm right clicking on a control flow, I'm going to a thing called properties, okay? Here, I have a section for execution. I have a section for execution. In my execution section, I have a thing called max concurrent executables. Okay? I have a thing called max concurrent executables. And <coughs> I have some other things called max error count and all those things. But I was telling you this maximum concurrent executables, right? It means it which is which is for parallel processing, which is for parallel processing, right? Is depends on your server configuration. If your server is a quad core processor, right? If your server is a quad core processor, it means that there are four servers. It means that there are four servers, right? So the number of parallel processings you can do is number of cores plus 2 yeah number of cores plus 2 it means that if my server is a quad core processor I can run maximum of 6 parallel tasks in a single SSIS package I cannot run more than that even if you put uh, more number of parallel tasks okay even if you put more number of parallel tasks SSIS will not uh, perform it okay example what do I mean by parallel task example I have one data flow task here and another data flow task here so what I'll do is like just to make sure that uh, we don't disturb the existing packages uh, just make sure that I have a new new package created right so no I cannot see this one right uh, just go to solution explorer just pin it right so I'll just try to clear all my drawings and so I'll copy this package 
and paste it. I'll rename this as uh, data flow scenarios underscore optimization. Yeah, this is the oh, is not one right. Okay, so I I renamed this one. So if, what is the meaning of parallel tasks? Actually, you can have number of data flow tasks, or you can have a SQL SQL task, or you can have another data flow task. Right? Actually, these are not connected here. This is independent. This is independent. This is independent. This is independent. So th this is one group which is dependent on each other. This group, but four these things are independent, right? If I have ten different parallel things which are running here, right? But if my server is a quad-core processor, so it can run only six parallel tasks at a time. If it is a dual-core processor, it can run only four parallel tasks. Even if you have ten parallel things. So based on your server settings, you have to design your SSS packages. There is no meaning to put put ten parallel tasks when you are running the things in a quad-core processor. There is more no meaning in it. Right? It still it will take only six packages. You can try it out. Yeah. So that is something on the maximum concurrent executables. Okay. Very important property for the interview. And I was just uh, telling you the engine threads. Right. So the engine threads is all about the trial and error. So you can try it out. Right. And just explain to you about that. Okay. <coughs> so how you can uh, monitor the performance of a SSIS? Okay, so in the how you can monitor the performance of SSIS, what you can do is you can go to uh, all programs control panel and there is a section called just go to the control panel administrative tools and there's a section called performance monitor. Yeah, using this is perfmon actually you can monitor the different things of a uh, maybe it is a SQL server or it is a SSIS or it can be any other software in your system, right? So <laughs> so you just uh, learn about this performance, just go through this and just play around with that and you will be able to configure it to uh, SQL Server and SSIS. Example, this consider this as my ETL server which only the SSIS is running, right? So what happens now it is already monitoring my performance, yeah? So in this server what is happening? This is the time I have, right? So this is the time I have, so what it will do, it is, it is showing that how my computer is performing, how my server is performing. Sometimes it may be very steep, it may be low, right? So example, if they are 10.51 a.m., if the curve is very steep here, if the curve is very steep, it means that there is some process happening in the SSIS at this time, which is taking too much of memory or which is taking too much of resources. You have to, at that time, you can actually find what is the bottleneck. So using this performance monitor, on the ETL server, don't do it on local computer because local computer there are a lot of different things, right? Usually on the ETL server or in the production server you can do this, yeah? So this is something about the perfmon where you can identify the bottlenecks. It will not be useful to fix any optimization things, but it will be able, you can be able to identify the bottlenecks, right? Okay. <coughs> so, there are some few things when you go to the performance uh, counter, there are few things where you can learn about this. So I suggest you to explore more on that. So I'm not showing much on that one, but I, I want you to go through that, yeah? Okay. Okay, so we, we have a settings called uh, fast, parse, fast parse property, okay? So this is basically when you deal with a thing called flat files okay whenever you have the flat file data so, so there is a just go through the settings of flat file and you will have a property called fast parse where what 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 will do is it will if you have something like a uh, integer or if you have some uh, date and time types right so it has to do uh, some parsing right so what what kind of parsing like it it may be a compatibility uh, check or it may be a uh, sensitivity check or it may be a uh, unicode check. So this kind of parsing things it has to do. So fast parse helps to uh, set some more resources for that. 
and perform the things in a better way. So there is a property in the flat files, just uh, maybe you can explore that, so you can do that setting, right? Okay, so when we are talking about the data flow transformations, okay, when we are talking about the data flow transformations, here we, this is one of the examples we talked about the data flow transformations, right? So what we saw is, put it here, what we saw is there are some out of this one, there are some blocking transformations and there are some not blocking transformations. Example, so what is a blocking transformation? Example, I have a sort. So what, is, what, what does this sort do? It will do a order by, right? It will do a order by. It can do the order by only when it has the total set of data with it. With it. If they have some 100 rows of employee data, only when it, it has 100 rows of employee data, it can do the order by by employee ID. It cannot do with half data, right? So sort is considered as a blocking transformation. Yeah? Lookup. So what is lookup? Lookup is a transformation where, where it will look up to something else and give the output, right? But it has to do some, uh, it has to do some operation in between. So lookup is considered as a semi-blocking. It means it will not to totally block, but it is kind of a semi-blocking, right? But there are a few other transformations which are not at all blocking. Example, if you take delayed column, right? What is this delayed column will do? We have the first name and last name from the source. It is deriving a full name, right? Actually, this need not wait for all the rows to come from a source. As and when one row gets it, it will convert this and it will push the data. As and row second row gets it, it will push the data. It is not at all blocking the things, right? So there are different types of transformations, but when you are designing a highly complex SSIS package where you are very constrained on the timing, right? So what you do is you have to decide on whether I should use a full whether I can ignore any of the fully blocking or semi-blocking, right? So you have to do this. And the other generic rule you have is like whatever you can do it in the SQL, just try to do it in the SQL. Example, may some things you may be doing, you can do it in the execute SQL task. Just do it there because database engine is powerful than ETL engine. Yeah? <laughs> and there are some sections called uh, uh, fast load versus normal load. Right, so okay, so the, the, I'll, I'll tell you what is this. Uh, one of the important things. Example, I have uh, one. I'll take you solution explorer. Just in it. Yeah, I'll go to view solution explorer. I want a solution explorer, right? So solution explorer is available here. I'll just pin it. Okay, so in the OLADB destination, there is something called as table or view fast load. Okay, and you have a table or view. Two options are available. Okay, if I select table or view, it is still the destination is table. If the table or view fast load, then you have some conditions here. Okay, always try to use the fast load, table or view fast load. Okay, so that you can have play with these properties to improve the performance, but there is a catch here. You can have this option only when your target table is SQL Server. You can have this option only when your target table or destination table is SQL Server. If, you, if your target table is Oracle or DB2 or Sybase or MySQL, Postly, Informex, any other database or a flat file, you will not have this option. Your option will be only this. That's it. You cannot because SSIS cannot control the other things, right? SSIS can control SQL Server. SSIS cannot control Oracle because it it may it's a third party which is outside the ecosystem of Microsoft, right? Try to use always this one, okay? And the other thing, so always we use the concept called OLEDB destination, okay? Remember one thing, very important interview question, okay? What is the difference between if I use a OLEDB destination and I have another destination called as SQL Server dest destination? Okay, I have a thing called SQL Server destination here. Actually, I can use this also. I can use OLEDB destination or SQL Server destination. What is the difference between these two? 
very important interview question. Okay, so the difference between these two is SQL Server destination is faster than OLEDB destination. Okay, but the keyweight of SQL Server destination is your ETL server and your destination database should be on same server. Then only you can use this SQL Server destination. Your SSIS ETL server and the target table whatever you are selecting here should be on same server. Then only this will work otherwise this will not work. So if you are leading a project in SSIS just make sure of one thing. If your ETL server is different than if your SQL server right then in your development don't ask your developers or if you are a developer don't use SQL server destination as part of your development. Once it goes to production it will fail. Okay. So as an architecture wise the person should be knowing what type of things they should be using it here. If it is OLEDB destination, if it is the same ETL server of database engine, if it is a different ETL server of database engine, still it will work. But it is a bit slower than this one. Okay, this is a very big difference and important interview question. Okay, so that is what I am first talking about OLEDB adapter versus SQL server adapter and I talked about fast load and normal load. Right? And there are some concepts called slowly changing dimensions. So what it says instead of using the slowly changing dimension transformation, there is a slowly changing dimension transformation. We stop using this, uh, just try to use a merge statement in SQL Server so that it is improves the performance. Right? So there are some other things, right? As I told you, index you have to take care of the index and drop all the indexes before you load and load the data and create the indexes. And in the so in the flag file source also actually you can do some properties uh, by by setting. So don't try to, when you are reading the data from the flat file, don't try to convert the data type in the flat file. Just be it like that. So otherwise like if you want to convert every row it has to convert, it will take a lot of time. Okay. There are some other things like uh, if you are reading the data from a particular table, uh, if it is only for read only purpose, just try to reach the no lock. Okay. So these are the, some of the things and just you can go through the other things also. Right, <coughs> and I just uh, on the OLEDB destination I talked about the commit size, right? So commit size zero. What is the meaning of commit size? I already talked about the OLEDB destination commit size. <coughs> maximum set commit size. Even if you put a zero, it will take the maximum. So just try to put uh, a reasonable number here. Maybe ten. You can divide your data into ten ten chunks and try to load it. If your data is 100 million records, just, uh, just maybe you can put it as 10 million. Just commit for every 10 million. So just you divide into 10 chunks. If it is not working, just try to put it as 5 million. So performance optimization is in any system, not only SSIS, it is not a straightforward method. So people has to put lot of brains, do trial and error, because every system, every configuration, every production system is different. Nobody knows what is happening, right? You have to put your brains, put your work, trial and error, learn the things, right, fix the things and make sure that your things are optimized. This is how performance optimization works, right. So all these things are performance optimization things. As I told you, like you can just go through the Microsoft thing also which I downloaded. You have more things there and there is no end for performance optimization. I may be giving only 50 to 70 percent of the input. There is a lot of things where you can learn by yourself, okay. So here we conclude, right? Here we conclude uh, uh, SSIS things, okay?